Hello, in this video we're going to look at some of the implications of the Lindenberg Central Limit Theorem and what we get from it. And so as a quick reminder, the theorem says that if, the, if we sum xk and they're independent with a finite mean and a finite variance, then this quantity Tn where where the CN is actually the variance or the standard deviation of this, the, this variance and for every epsilon this quantity is met as n goes to infinity where we're integrating over this region then TN converges and distribution to some random variable that has a standard normal random variable and we'll go into detail what this means so here's the here's the theorem and what it implies is that in the identically distributed case this is automatically met so if, if we're iid and actually this so the central limit theorem that's taught in beginning statistics courses or in you know most statistics courses and you speak of the central limit theorem that's the identically distributed case. So this case is more general than the, that one. And so the, the, this is encompassed in that. And, and we're going to prove it and then I'll give a little example. So let's assume the XK or IID, so that's independent, identically distributed with finite mean and finite variance and let F be the distribution function of XK. So here's one note that I always like to point out. It doesn't say XK is continuous or it doesn't say it's finite and the way that this condition is written encompasses both and so here here's the here's the condition here's the Lindeberg condition and notice that we use a D capital F of K and this is called the Riemann stilts integral and and actually after doing the a couple of these videos I'm gonna put out a video describing that and because it's used quite a bit in statistics because we we deal with both discrete and continuous and notation like this handles both and it's and when I first encountered it it wasn't straightforward and so I think I'm going to do a video okay but I diverse so here's the case so now but since we're in the identically distributed case this is a constant it's just mu the sigma k squared is just a constant just sigma there's a constant the cn squared is the sum of the variances which is n times that constant so because we're in the identically distributed case this is the setting so now over here there's no k so if when k is 1 or k is 2 this is the same so if we're going to sum the same quantity n times we get n times this quantity so then if to get rid of this we take it times n but the n and that n cancel which leaves us with this quantity now we're integrating this quantity remember the Riemann still said df d cap f if it's continuous that is like f of x dx and if it's discrete then we have to keep it like this but either way we're integrating over this region here and, and everything is fixed but this n. And so as n goes to infinity, you know, this part goes big, big, you know, gets, it goes to infinity itself. And then, and so the region that we're integrating, actually it goes to the empty set. And when you integrate over the empty set, that's zero. So this quantity goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So the condition, Lindenberg conditions met when we're IID. So here's a, here's a quick example. So let's let xk be Bernoulli, so the xk are independent, and the mean is p and the variance is pq, you know, 1 minus p, um, thus they're identically distributed. So this sum, so let's let sn be this partial sum and cn be the variance of this partial sum, which is npq, np1 minus p, then this quantity, which is this, goes in conversion and distribution to a standard normal. So this is what the Lindenberg condition goes to it, gives us. But we also kind of knew this from the central limit theorem, you know, in the IID case. So the next one 
we're going to look at is a uniformly bounded and that means the values of our random variable are bounded by some number m and um, this this case isn't always covered in the, sort of the normal central limit theorem but it is in the Lindenberg case and now the example that I give here is also a 0 1 random variable but it's so unique and I'll save it for that so um, so we have let's assume that our random variable is bounded and this is for all k and that our variance does go to 0 when you know when we uh, take the variance of the sum And so here's here's the situation. So now notice that there's no sig there's no summation and there's no one divided by the uh, cn squared. So we're going to look at this specific case first and then expand it to the Lindenberg condition. So here, when you take the integral of some value, you know, say f of x dx, or you know, or if it's discrete, you leave it like that, over a restricted region, that's the same as saying the, it's the expected value of this quantity, which is here, but times an indicator function, you know, which is this region. So these two values are the same. Now, since this quantity here is bounded by some constant, we know that each variable is bounded, so somehow this has to be bounded. So if we can find that constant, which is not part of the random variable, we can take it out front, and then when we take the expected value of an indicator function, it actually ends up being just this probability. And so that's what we do. So the constant is uh, 2m squared, and then this time, because it's constant, we can take it out, and the expected value of an indicator function is just the probability. And the way that we get 2m squared is this. So since this quantity squared is the is always positive because we're squaring it. The absolute value of it doesn't change it. So then we expand this uh, quadratic and then that is less than this quantity. So where you take the absolute value of each piece but this is less than m squared and this would be less than 2m squared and this is less than m squared. So 1m squared, 2m squared, 1m squared is, is 4m squared but that's the same as 2m quantity squared. So that's how we get this piece here to factor out. Now, by Chebyshev's inequality, this piece is less than the variance of this divided by this squared, which is this piece. Okay. So now let's go back to the Lindenberg condition. So let's put the summation out front and the cn squared. Well, we just showed that this piece is less than or equal to this, this piece. Now, since the you know this is constant, it would be taken out front, epsilon squared, the cn squared, and we're left with just the sum of uh, sigma k squared. Well, that's what we're calling cn squared. So that cancels with one of those, and, it, and we're left with just these constants. And so th since these are finite, well, not constants, but... Um, constant in regards to this k and so now if we set n goes to infinity these are you know finite values and this goes to infinity so this whole quantity goes to zero so by default the uh, Lindenberg criteria is met now let's look at this example which I just find so fascinating so here we're going to let xn be independent and it's going to take on the value of 1 with a probability 1 over n it takes on the value of 0 1 minus 1 over n so they're not identically distributed but they are independent and but they're bounded they only take they're bounded by 1 you know because 1 is the biggest it gets so let's look at the expect so this case is is un, is uh you you know it, it it's under the Lindenberg condition so that means if we look at the expected value, and then to get the variance, we take the expected value of n squared, which is the same because it's a 0, 1 random variable. So the variance is this quantity. So then we have Cn, which or Sn, which is this sum. Um, 
Th those are all definitions. And we want to show that this goes to a standard normal. But but wait a second, shouldn't we subtract off the expected value divided by the, the variance of this? And the answer is, yeah, if we wanted to apply the Lindenberg central limit theorem directly, but we're going to show this converges to a standard normal by using the Lindenberg uh, criteria. So here we know that the expected value of Sn is the sum of these expected values, which is the sum from 1 to n of 1 over i. Now this is called a harmonic sum, by the way. Now if we look at the variance of Sn, it's the sum of this quantity, and you can kind of break that up into two pieces. Now this is finite, the sum of, of n, oh, those should be i. Oh, darn it. Um, so, so this is i and this is i squared. So those, as n goes to infinity, this goes to a finite value and this blows up to infinity, so it goes to infinity. And so by the Lindenberg theorem, we know that Tn, this quantity, approaches a standard normal distribution. So now the question is, how do we go from here to there? And we do it in a unique way. I'm going to do it with some notes here. So here's the harmonic sum minus the log of n. Now if you look up harmonic sum, you, I think you can find this. And this difference in limit goes to some finite value. Okay, And it's a specific conf constant over one, just slightly over one half. And you, I'll let you look that up, but we're going to assume that's true. Now, if, if we take this log and subtract it to the other side, we actually, we get this quantity here, okay, without the limit. And so for each specific n, there's an extra piece here that converges at, at little o of one. So it goes away in limit. So if we divide everything by the log of n, this piece here, and then take the limit, that's what we do here. So um, this is 1, and then of course we're dividing by the log. Well, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, and that's 1. So this limit is 1. So from 1, we know the limit of this expected value of Sn, which was that harmonic sum is finite, goes to some constant. And if we look at this difference here, the variance over log n, the variance was these two pieces. Now if we look at the log of both and divide, and then this is that well-known quantity here, um, and then we take the limit, this is 1. So this goes to 0, so in, you know, constant over infinity goes to 0. And this we just showed by 2 goes to 1, so this limit goes to 1. So now if we look at, at this quantity here, which we know converges to a standard normal distribution, and we add 0 and we multiply by 1, we're not changing this quantity. Now let's take this denominator over this piece and then over this piece separately, which is what we get here. Now, originally, you can kind of see my whiteout. I wrote it as, you know, I kept it in this form, but really you don't need it, because, so I just get rid of it and call it the variance of Sn. Now, in limit, this top part we just showed was a constant. And this goes, this goes to infinity, so this goes to zero in limit. Now, this piece we showed that this goes to 1 in limit. So now if we take the limit of Tn, and that's what you, know, that's what you do to, for the sense limit theorem, then it goes, this goes to 1, so we're left with just this quantity. But we know Tn converges to a standard normal, so this is the same. And, and we're actually done. And that's it. So that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.